So who is Jesus? The first thing to get really clear about is that Jesus walked the earth. This is indisputable. The modern culture tries sometimes to present Jesus in the same category as uh, Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. And this is ludicrous. And you're smarter than that. We need to start thinking about Jesus on a deeper level than the popular culture. How do we know Jesus actually existed? Well, the most comprehensive presentation of Jesus' life is in the Gospels. And the scriptures clearly establish that Jesus lived in a particular place and at a particular time in history. They're not vague about when he lived or where he lived. In fact, they go to great lengths to establish his birth in the context of world history. But the best evidence to establish that Jesus actually walked the earth is not in Christian writings, but in secular writings and other religious traditions. You see, the secular historians of his time wrote about Jesus. And Jewish writers agree that Jesus walked the earth at the same time and place that the Gospels establish. It's also worth noting that the other major world religions all acknowledge Jesus. This is important because all these other religions are rivals of Christianity in some way. The easiest way for these rival religions to disprove Christianity would be to demonstrate that Jesus never actually lived. But they're unable to do that. You see, Jesus, he's not a figment of Christian imagination. He lived at a certain time and he lived in a certain place. He walked the earth just like you and I are today. But let's go deeper. Who was Jesus? One day, Jesus was walking down the road with his disciples and he asked them two questions. The first question, who do people say that I am? His disciples replied, well, some say you're John the Baptist, returned from the dead. Others say you're Elijah or one of the other prophets. The second question Jesus asked his disciples was, who do you say that I am? I call this the Jesus question, and everyone has to answer it for themselves. You can't avoid the question. Not answering the question is answering the question. And you'll notice Jesus didn't ask his disciples who they thought he was on the first day he met them. By the time he asked them, they'd been at his side for almost three years. So perhaps before you answer the Jesus question, we should take another look at Jesus, who he is, why he came, what he really taught, and what all of that means to you and me in the modern world. The culture wants to reduce Jesus to just a nice guy. And not even the nicest guy, but just, you know, Jesus is a nice guy, there's lots of nice guys, and Jesus is one of the nice guys. This is tragic. So who is Jesus? There are many ways to answer the question. He's a Galilean, a Jew, a carpenter, an itinerant preacher, a miracle worker, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Christ, the Savior of the world, the Chosen One, the Messiah. C.S. Lewis, one of the great Christian writers of the 20th century and the creator of the Narnia series, says we really only have three choices when it comes to Jesus. He's either a liar, a lunatic, or the Messiah he claims to be. Other major world religions acknowledge Jesus as a great teacher or a great prophet, which seems very accommodating and tolerant, but there are several problems with this position. First, Jesus never claimed to be a great teacher or a great prophet. He claimed to be the long-awaited Messiah. If he isn't the Messiah, he's either a liar or a lunatic, but not a great teacher and great prophet. These things are incongruent. Let's get really clear about something. If Jesus is not the Messiah, he's the biggest liar in the history of the world. You cannot be the biggest liar in history and still be a great teacher or a great prophet. These things don't go together. They're incongruent. And more than just being a liar, if Jesus is not the Christ, he perpetrated the biggest fraud in human history. Now, I suppose there, there's always the option that uh, Jesus was a lunatic, you know, that he was mentally ill. Asylums are full of people with the Messiah complex, but there is no record of anyone of any credibility claiming to be the Messiah before Jesus. And I suspect you can't name someone who's claimed to be the savior of the world since Jesus. You see, the Messiah complex is a post-Jesus phenomenon. If Jesus was a lunatic, could the early Christians really have kept that a secret? I mean, the scale of the conspiracy that would be required to conceal Jesus as a lunatic makes it more than improbable. And if he was just a lunatic, 
They could have easily proved he was just a lunatic and simply locked him up. There would have been no need to crucify him because it would have been so easy to discredit him. If they could have proved that he was a lunatic, they would have had no reason to feel threatened by him and no reason to kill him. But he was considered by both secular and religious authorities to be much more dangerous than a simple lunatic. So who is Jesus? He's the Galilean carpenter who became an itinerant preacher, who turned water into wine, made the lame walk and the blind see, walked on water, multiplied a handful of loaves and fishes to feed thousands of men, women and children, got under the skin of the secular and religious leaders of his day, was executed on a cross, buried in a borrowed tomb, and three days later, rose from the dead. Jesus wasn't a great teacher. He was the greatest teacher. He wasn't a great prophet. He was the greatest prophet. But more importantly, Jesus is the Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. Now let's take a look at what all this means to you.